Corey is going to take us one step further into the future. This This is, as we said, what is it? Where brown goes up. Yeah, I think this is the one, right? This is the one. Hold and on. That there makes it is. no sense. Here we go. I'm talking about UPS, right? Yep. So the, 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 the package company that's uh, obviously everybody knows about, right? UPS. Um, basically, the, the big news here is UPS is to, uh, partnered with a company called Beta Technologies and put in a big order for a bunch of their VTOLs mm. uh, or eVTOLs. Uh, I say VTOLs because... Uh, as we did a bit more research on the topic for you guys, the the, the company Beta Technologies is it does have a vehicle flying. So it looks very much it's very much like that one exactly. Mm -hmm. This is called. Let me get the name right so I don't screw it up. It's the Alia A two fifty. Pretty and mean. it's um it's flying. They've already have a demonstrating uh, model that flies, but they don't have as far as I could tell they don't have the vertical takeoff part done. So they're doing a lot of the the airplane part. Um, so they have some. Instead of the skids on there, on the one they're actually flying and doing testing on, they have some wheels on there. But it is an actual testing, not certified yet. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I guess, right, the headlining news there is that uh, behind the scenes, whatever they've been talking about with U UPS enough that UPS is confident, hey, this is going to be a thing uh, for our productivity or for our process. And again, this is looking like uh, many other products you've seen for air taxi, but now cargo in this case. About 250 miles range. This is, uh, says at about 170 miles of, per hour of speed. Right. And they're saying 1,400 pounds of cargo ideal for this kind of, this platform anyway. And um, that's interesting. Right. I, I think for me, the, the headlining part, not so much the technology behind the vehicle itself, because we're, we're seeing a lot of these different things. And this is a bit of a more, more I'd say a more traditional like design. With VTOL capabilities added on, sure. Um, I think so. You're obviously, right. I want to. I'd I'd be interested to see how the aircraft will perform in the vertical takeoff capacity when they add the batteries back in. I did. I did see that a lot of the tests they've been doing. The, the batteries weren't on board and all that, that kind of stuff. But this, uh, so this is a petrol power uh, test vehicle Version, currently, correct. right? That did um, its first test flight. Yeah. So they've been they've been flying it, but it's petrol anyway. I guess the, the main thing for me is, is it's UPS. I mean, whatever they've been showing UPS behind the scenes um, as far as their Potential? future and then getting it certified obviously through FAA because it's going to be a domestic a domestic setup for at least... I haven't seen anything if they're talking about going worldwide. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, point being, uh, the company's out of Vermont. It's a U.S. company, just so you guys know. Um, and uh, It's got interesting specs, though. 1,400 pound capability yep. uh, of lifting payload, yeah, and yeah. the payload. 250 mile nautical range, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty good. And then it's got 170 miles an hour. I right? think this all is interesting to come back to... If they're... If they're if they're targeting these numbers these figures off of speed and range off mm -hmm. of current battery technology or are they anticipating something with future battery technology that we've already talked about right because i don't know that kind of stuff as well and hey i got one word uh, yeah you know what that is oh i know jet up terror oh, i'm gonna tell you why it's still jet up terror because when you take gas and put it in a chamber and you you use it in a way that people are familiar with i think that they're gonna beat everybody on range and speed and their fluidic propulsion system is going to be a way to go. But I am surprised how many of these other unproven technologies are getting buy-ins from major corporations that are willing to lay out this cash. Well, that was one thing also to point That's, out, that this one doesn't have an S-Pack. They haven't done any of that stuff yet. Right. So this is just straight-up investment. Quite, not quite the same as right. uh, some of these other Volocopters and, and stuff. So. so, I mean, look, United United is getting in bed with who is it? Lilium? And Mesa, yes. And Mesa, yeah. right? And so it, there's... Oh, no. Uh, uh, Volocopter. Volo so not, Arch not was in one, with one, and then the other one was with the other. So it really doesn't yeah, make yeah, a difference. Yeah. In some way, <laughs> shape, or form, our skies are going to look different in the next five to six years with these EV tolls taking over the marketplace. Mm -hmm. In short haul. It's still not yes. going to change oh, yes, yes. your long haul distances. But it, it will interconnect smaller larger city routes with people that want on-demand quicker travel i can imagine unless that regional carrier out of telarus shows up Ooh, i forgot their name already i apologize yeah i can't remember um uh but there's a lot to it i yeah. mean it this it really makes me think about what it's going to be what the certification process is going to be for the pilots that are going to initially be on board these aircraft because mm -hmm. I also don't see these things coming out immediately day one as being pilotless aircraft. Yeah, like I don't see that. Yeah, exactly. I don't think seeing them roll out, you know, a thousand pounds of payload, pilot into this thing, and they fly it 150 miles with nobody on board. Yeah, not um, yet. Not yet. I I know that would be something they are thinking about, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, well, I don't well, see that happening just yet. 
It's, it goes along with all the same things we've talked about with other companies that are doing air taxis and EV tolls and or just regular V tolls. Is getting them fully autonomous. I mean, we've done we've done whole programs on the hurdles that are that are still in place. Absolutely uh, for not only the FAA but you know all the uh, because the technology is uh, in a way almost ahead. Well, I'd say it probably it certainly is ahead. It's Which ahead part? of the regulation. Right. So, sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, oh, but that's uh, not, that, is that. But that's not. That's not new. I that's mean, not new because aviation started. There was no new. federal yeah. aviation administration. Yeah. People just went up and flew. Mm-hmm. Orbital Wright did and, not have to apply then, for anything. I don't think. Uh, the rules started showing up, and people started obviously messing stuff up. People got hurt, and. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we're 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 off topic there. We're, but there you go. But yeah, this is so uh, again for me. I wanted to bring it up to show that there's other things going on than the players we usually talk about. Um. Not me. And uh, <laughs> I got my I got my eye EPS on one. is now doing this, so it's it's something to to see what happens. Sure. So I got. I, my... I know you're all in there with Jetta Terra, and I'm not I saying am. I'm not. I'm just I would like. No, to I know you are. Follow I, I, the I, I whole industry as much as possible. I'm I'm breaking Corey's chops because when we okay, so here's my here's my big deal. Yeah, have at it. Okay, here's my big deal. The only reason why I'm breaking your chops is because there's so many to pick from in a field of designs and different approaches to EV tolls right now, right? And, and this is my major concern. When you go down and you look at the types of airplanes that you see at your local airport for, say, travel, right? Everyone generally gets on a commercial airliner. Well, there's only... Actually, stand by. Let me see something. Four Keep major talking. manufacturers of, of commercial airliners right now, okay? And, and that's Bombardier. You've got Embraer. You've got Boeing. And you got Airbus. You, of course, there's a couple of ancillaries like ATR and a few others out there, right? But the, overall, the big players are known. And everyone's design is conventionally just about the same. So I'm, I'm concerned about what's going to be coming in the future as to how many different design approaches that can be successful to fill in this space, right? Mm-hmm. How many different approaches in power plant can be successful in this space? And which ones are actually going to land a thumping economical blow that's going to make it satisfactory to both the operators, the investors, and the whole the whole environment. To, to me, that's the biggest concern, right? That's that's what I got. What'd you send me? Dollars and cents. Okay. I wanted to send you something. You may already have seen it, but I don't know if you have or not. But uh, this is another uh, resource I use to kind of to keep track of some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is the uh, website called Transport Up. This is their hanger, the hanger. Ah. And it lists. Um, not all the players, but many of the major players in air taxi and EV toll news. A lot of these you might you can flip through real quick and see that they're just concepts that somebody came up with and they're not even really in development. Right. But the point there is there's you know if you were just to go on the news and look up air air taxi EV toll stuff you you come across maybe ten players maybe mm-hmm. of varying research and certifications and testing. But there's actually a ton more out there. NFTA and they have different uses. Uh, so I wanted to kind of leave that leave that with you guys just to well, this because it's pretty interesting. This is really interesting because I see some players on here that we know of, and yeah. then I see some that obviously aren't going to make it, and then I see others that are. I mean, the Molar Sky cars in right. here, the DeLorean car we talked about is in here. Um, obviously, Beta Technologies is in here. Mm-hmm. Jetta Terra is in here. Um, that, so that's what I mean is, is, um, William, of course, all, yeah, a lot of the big, they're, they're all here. Yeah. There's, there's, so. there's lots of players and you know, look, if I was the inventor of the Muller sky car right now, I'd be a little bit annoyed because <laughs> I was probably onto something way before others, except technology hadn't caught up to my idea. Right. But let's face it, a DJI Mavic or a drone back then that basically was the first thing that, that flew that was quad based. That was a mass production because hobbyists were building those electric type quads for about Four years before DJI took over the market. James has got it right in chat. Right. What's he saying? He's like, you just want to fly one, Mike. That's your problem. Not saying you don't. I don't hey. Not saying you don't. But hey, okay, wait. I'm not you're, saying I don't either. You're, I mean, you're I, right. You're I, right. I, yeah. I do just want to fly one, but here's the other part of it. I can. <laughs> so if I can convert my license to... Now, I'm trying to figure out which license they would convert first. My fixed wing license or my helicopter license. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, which one would they do? It might be a new category. I got to be honest. Because I know that there's the lift category, right? The vertical lift category or something like that. That's the ones that the Osprey guys have. So there is one other class of airmen out there that exists. And, or, and here's and that's the other part. That's rotor, but what is it actually called? As I far as certification standards go. Go, go look it up, because I'm not really sure. The difference would be that, or would it cover my UAV license? That I don't know. I'd, yes, I would like to fly one. Under which category and class? I don't know. I think tilt rotor falls under rotorcraft. It is still under rotorcraft. 
but I don't know if, if well, that's a category as far as they're concerned. And then there's a class that's built rotor. I don't know. We'll see. Because the one oh, what was it? The actually, that's another thing we uh, we didn't have ready to prepare. But the uh, what? the bell. The Bell Augusta project. The, one that one's was. coming to the market pretty Is soon. it really? Yeah. So Because now it's all Bell or is it all Augusta that's um, the project? I think it's... Because there is a tilt rotor that's coming out into the, the industry. You know, let's not confuse it. There's a whole... Yeah. yeah, maybe we shouldn't go into that because we'll go into a, it on, we haven't on prepared Wednesday. for that yet. Yeah. Nobody's but there are that. multiple tilt rotors. If you guys know about the Osprey, it's, a, it's the... The tilt rotor. Uh, it's a tilt rotor. So basically it has two quite large, actually, rotors that can take the aircraft off uh, vertically, and then they tilt, and they convert to an airplane as it begins to go forward and gain, gain airspeed. Then it has lifting wings that are the other lifting devices. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this thing. Um, so <laughs> Lots so of to, get, of to get along with that, that's the tilt rotor. And what, what, what Mike's kind of saying is the pilots in this, they need to be familiar with how helicopters operate mm -hmm. and then obviously how planes operate. And so it's a like, kind of a combined set and what we were going at with air was with air taxis if in the future when air taxis finally are a thing in whatever form that is uh when they're manned for a while because they certainly will be at least for testing in the beginning maybe maybe forever we'll see what where, where, where does that go uh and i imagine it'd be the same place that these are because then there's the, Pi there's the pilots the right pilots. there's the bell Bell's making another <laughs> one which is going to be competitive here in the marketplace which is going to be their speedy new and Blackhawk variant. What's that one called, though? This is the V280 Velour. Yes, that makes sense. So this is the one that's that, coming. Yep. This is the one that's coming to marketplace as well. So when these, and, the Gusta 609, isn't that it? Yeah, there's the 609, right. which is a version of that, which they had some a fatal accident yeah, with, which I don't know where the called. actual development went. So I think yeah, it was the 609. the 609. Mm -hmm. Aircraft was uh, yeah here it is yeah just three days ago I know I saw this Leonardo's progressing on the training center and the Augusta Westland six hundred nine okay so the the AW prepares for production of the six hundred nine yeah okay so that's the one let me get this one up here because yep that was coming. this is another one that's in the marketplace which they did have and they have flown this prototype we've actually I've actually touched this prototype yeah we were this, at the show yeah a long time ago when they when had they introduced it. it. Yep. And it was uh, Augusta Westland Bell was originally the that two, was before the two they people. Had the accident. Correct. And then they had their accident. And then it was, I think it was grounded for almost about a year and a half <clears> before <throat> they brought it back. And so now it's almost mission ready, which uh, originally the first one was supposed to be delivered in, in Bristow colors, which was one yeah, of the, Bristow, the yep. companies that had put in a, uh, I guess, some orders for them in the not too distant future. So there's that. Now that we've gone completely and blown the cover off of the things that we understand about VTOLs and where these <laughs> aircraft are going, uh, there's a lot to this conversation. And that's yeah. my thing. Which one's going to win at the gate, right? It's yeah. the one that wins at the gate or the one that gets able to, to be productive in producing your Amazon package at your doorstep or yep. whatever. Those are going to be your winners. And right now it's a crowded field, lots of money. I want to see a winner. Yeah. I know I, I have my winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it looks awesome and I think it's going to work very, very well. Um, yep. Yeah. So the fact that you have both already makes you kind of, it, well, it's kind of a small club. Yeah. To be uh, dual rated, but we're lucky. Yeah. We're, we're both lucky and it's nice to have experience in both. Yep. Hey, but you know, what's also great. You guys out there keeping us it in the is, conversation. Yes. So remember like subscribe and follow, uh, keep up to date in the latest 